Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Heidi Decker. I'm the Marketing Manager for Smart Deploy. And today's webcast is the five ways to improve your Windows deployment strategy. Uh, we have some great information for you, and we're going to try really hard just to keep it to 30 minutes. I know we started a couple minutes late. Um, hopefully, we can make that up along the way. Uh, we have some great people in the room here today. I have uh, Spencer Dunford, our Director of Sales. We have Eric Nymark, our Systems Engineer. Alan Marsh, our CTO. And joining us from the road, we have Aaron Suzuki, Smart Deploy CEO and Founder. Uh, Aaron, are you with us? Do we have you on audio? Yes, good morning. Can you hear me? Great. Yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. Glad we got you. <laughs> okay, just a few administrative items before we go. We're going to ask a, a few poll questions throughout the presentation. Please answer those. It helps us kind of guide our conversation and understand better who we have uh, joining us today. Uh, also, if you have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the chat or the Q&A. Uh, feature in the WebEx screen over on the right-hand side. Uh, we will answer those questions throughout the presentation or save them till the end when we have a, an open Q&A session. Um, additionally, I will send out a follow-up email to everyone who registered for this event. I'll send that out tomorrow. And that will contain a link to the recorded session if for some reason you get pulled away and, and you miss a few minutes of the presentation. Uh, we'll also include some other links in that email that other helpful, helpful things that we talk about today. So, um, I'm just going to go through the agenda real quick and, uh, and then hand things over to Aaron. Basically, first we're going to start off and do a little overview of who we are and what we're all about. Um, Aaron's going to give a bit of background information about Windows deployment through the years. And then we're going to jump right into those five areas that we want to examine um, and to help you improve your, your Windows deployment strategy. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with a, uh, an offer for everyone that's here to get a free pair of Skull Candy earbuds just for taking us up on the Smart Deploy Challenge. So stick around if you want to hear about that. And then we'll wrap it up with a few minutes of Q&A. So, you know, we want this to be interactive. Please ask your questions. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand things over to Aaron to do uh, the company overview and then deployment through the years. Aaron. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you. It's, uh, it's great that so many people were able to join this morning. We've been at this for a while, and I know that some of you have been on other webcasts in the past, so I'll kind of keep things brief, and we have a lot of information we want to cover. But ultimately what I want you guys to know is that this product grew out of a lot of experience doing this kind of work. And we got heavily involved in IT consulting when virtualization was just coming into its prime. And so that, along with decades-long experience doing uh, conventional Windows deployment the old ways, some of which we'll talk about today, is what helped inform our perspective with which we created Smart Deploy Enterprise. And it's that paradigm that really helped us shape this new model that we're advocating and, and, and proposing and that hundreds of other customers have decided is a, an efficient and intelligent way to go about things. We knew there was a better way. We've committed ourselves to pursuing it, and the product today is able to achieve a lot of uh, efficiencies as well as simplified approaches that make some of these advanced techniques achievable by you know, people who aren't rocket science level IT people or have a decade of experience doing a very niche thing like driver management, we take that and simplify that greatly for you. And we'll talk about uh, a number of those things today. So if you can go to the next slide. Thanks, Heidi. I guess the couple of the key things is that part of what encouraged us to pursue this entrepreneurially is that the market seemed relatively stagnant. That is to say that solutions seem to take the same technological approach for a long time, and a lot of the innovations were on the periphery. The, the, the core technologies that people were using were often the same. For example, using a sector-based uh, hard disk image for example. Likewise, people were not incorporating virtualization or taking advantage of the efficiencies of virtualization to advance the way that deployment works. And that was leading a lot of 
invite people to do things the old way or make assumptions based on the old way of doing things. So we advocate, for example, including applications in your image, and that that's a much more efficient way of doing things because we're able to eliminate a lot of the risks with our architecture and our approach that are associated with including applications in the image. And so that's what really gave rise to all this. But as much as we want you guys to evaluate and try our product, we're happy to share what we know and what we've learned. And some of these techniques can be applied to any product that you have, regardless of the manufacturer or the architecture. There are some basic things you can do. Um, we've just been able to incorporate all of these things into our product and, and package them in a way that, that you can kind of do things end-to-end -end in a much more streamlined way. And that's a lot of what uh, Spencer and Eric will be talking about uh, in the coming slides. So Spencer, I'll let you take it away, uh, starting with reference computers. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Aaron, for that. Um, I think that really sets the stage well for us to continue this discussion. Um, reference computers seem like a, a pretty good place to start for me. Uh, since that's generally where you start out building an image. Obviously, you have some sort of reference point that you want the rest of your machines to look like. So with that in mind, most customers that we talk with today generally use physical computers for their image creation. I think Aaron started to allude to, the, to using a virtual machine instead, and we'll get more into that. Um, but in part, customers are using a physical machine since that's how they've always done it. And it really makes a lot of sense, especially when you don't have when the number of computer models and hard, hardware configurations in your environment are relatively limited and, and pretty consistent, where you can make your image based off of the machine you have and, and apply it out to everything. It makes even more sense where Aaron talked about hard disk file formats being um, hard disk sector based, so that you can guarantee and know that, hey, whatever I put on this machine is getting applied to everything else. So it worked well in the past, but the challenge that we're running into today is that our customers have a diverse set of computers that they have to manage in any one environment. And so that means acquiring and maintaining additional computers and hardware devices just for the imaging process. So <clears throat> you can end up with a large image library, which can be difficult to not only create, but maintain ongoing over time. And the other part is you just end up with a lot of additional equipment and expense sitting around in your uh, IT closet. So when it comes time to update something, you're physically skimming through a closet trying to find that exact machine that you need, or maybe you're concerned about theft or something like that in your environment and machines getting legs and walking away. But the net of it is, is using these physical devices in the, as far as the imaging process is concerned can oftentimes lead to uh, additional expense, overhead, and generally confusion. So with that in mind, some best practices to, to think about, even if you want to continue using physical devices and that's, that's what you're comfortable with and makes sense for you, um, first thing that we'd suggest is create a plan. You know, document what needs to go inside the image so that you can create yourselves a repeatable process. If you, if you need to start over and rebuild your image, at least you've got a document around somewhere to say, hey, here's what we all agreed needs to go inside the image. Whether it's just the current OS and, and patches or you like to include applications and stuff, um, you've got some idea and some place to start for. Um, keep it clean. Really use only the applications and patches and settings that you absolutely need. Um, just be really aware that whatever you do in this reference machine stage, will be replicated through your entire environment. It happens pretty frequently where we'll get down the road with, with customers and they may be having some issue, and we trace it all the way back to there was some weird error or blue screen problem or something that happened at the reference machine stage that doesn't get fixed later in deployment. Uh, oftentimes that information gets stored inside the image and then replicated throughout the environment. So this is, this is kind of the measure twice cut once step for us where it's really important that you make sure your um, initial reference um, computer is perfect. Uh, so we talked before, try using a virtual machine instead of a physical uh, physical computer. And we can spend some more time talking about pros and cons and why that's a good idea. Um, starting from general, Microsoft Media always helps. Um, keep in mind this is your, your base platform to begin with, and uh, building from there really helps to use the, the genuine stuff. If you get over errors, 
start over. Again, take your time. So in terms of image strategy, now that we've covered reference machines, um, the common way or, and that how people are doing things today is generally based on um, the hardware that you happen to support in your, uh, your environment. The challenge is you can make a separate image for each device that you have in your environment that can lead to a, a ton of bandwidth and storage um, use that doesn't need to, need to happen. It's a lot of additional overhead. Um, and though it takes a lot of time to make separate images for each device, the, the bigger part is maintaining and keeping track of all of those things over time. The other piece of that is customers not only make images based off of the software or that they, they like, but they also will include drivers for those particular machines as well. So now it's a kind of a double, double whammy where you have um, a, a separate image for each model and for all the drivers relating to that. Um, generally, drivers are managed in one of these two ways. A blob method, which is go and take a bunch of drivers and put them uh, inside of some kind of container. There can be challenges with that in that target devices end up with unnecessary dr drivers that being deployed to them, um, takes up and, and clutters that target system, takes unnecessary storage bandwidth and ultimately time that we'll see. Um, just that turns into a bloated image and, and a target system may not get the exact drivers that it actually needs. So you'll end up troubleshooting down the road. The other part is obviously keeping images, or excuse me, drivers inside that image um, means that you're updating each thing, not only for the software payload that you like, but also the machines that you happen to deploy them to. So the limitations are, are pretty similar as from before. Uh, your cost, your bandwidth, and honestly, your, your flexibility with updating and keeping things current can be poor. So tips for creating um, <clears throat> better images and, and dealing with device drivers are you know, identify what absolutely needs to go inside the, the baseline image. Agree with your teams and for your environment what that needs to look like, whether it's just your operating system and patches, or like Aaron said, if you want to start including applications, you know, we've dealt and there's ways to deal with some of the challenge that were, challenges that were previously associated with including applications in the image. So uh, identify what absolutely needs to be there. And then get a plan around <clears throat> how many images that you need to have. You know, get a strategy on what software needs to be deployed to what users. And you may want to make separate images if the software payload will be different for different part departments. Um, you know, if you're a school, obviously the, the teachers and staff may get something different than the students. Um, but keep in mind, if you can head down this path of separating and modularly managing device drivers and images. Um, so that when you need to make updates, you can do them, those things as separate work streams and not be tied to updating everything at once for every single machine that you have. Yeah, and just uh, something to add there with your image strategy, you definitely want to get down to the least number of images possible to update because, you know, you use your time updating those images um, on a regular schedule. Um, but you also want to find the convergence point with putting applications into those images and maybe creating images based on applications as where it's going to be beneficial to maintain another image versus exponentially increasing your deployment time based on scripting that application installation on at the end. Great. Thanks, Eric. The fourth area of the five that we've, we've uh, discussed putting some best practices around is image updates. A lot of times customers don't generally think of using imaging as a break-fix uh, best practice. And oftentimes it's because they couldn't reliably count on that image to be current and up-to-date. So you end up in this foot race of what's going to be quicker, additional troubleshooting time at the endpoint or re-imaging a system. So if you're able to keep your images updated frequently, um, then that'll help you do some of these other scenarios that, you'll, that are useful for IT. So in the old way, Oftentimes, image updates required locating that physical device that the image was first built on, powering it up, and getting it back to a usable state, whether that's current patch levels or new applications that you decide to have in your organization. It really takes a lot of additional work to make those configuration changes and recapture it back out to the network. So because of that, there's limitations around the frequency for which you can update um, your reference machines 
Additionally, around some of the complexities with something um, like SysPrep that changes based off of the OS that you're supporting. Uh, oftentimes with SysPrep, certainly on the more modern operating systems like Windows 7, you're limited with the number of times that you can do that. And so you're constantly starting over and rebuilding your entire image from scratch uh, because of that. So the net result is outdated image and, and really a general lack of trust in the image quality to be de deployed to your target machines. So best practices for image updates, uh, again, use a virtual machine. It's really handy and portable. It's easier to just fire that thing up, make updates, and shut it down. Um, and if something goes wrong, at least you have the ability to trust perhaps snapshots and you can experiment with something and roll back quite easily. Um, stick to a schedule. You don't want business continuity to get in the way of your imaging. Um, make sure that the updates and changes that you make are gonna work out so that you don't spend all of your time troubleshooting those endpoints after, after making those changes. Do things on off hours, do things when everybody's not reliant on the network and productivity to be happening. Um, and then look for ways to optimize the bandwidth that, that you need there. Look for ways and, and te technologies that support perhaps deduplication or deltas or any other ways to keep, um, keep the, the reapplication of these images efficient. So the final thing here is thinking about uh, deployment time. So the rest of these tasks have generally been about maintenance and preparation for deployment. The fifth phase is really about actual deployment. Uh, as you'll see on our slide here, we have a, a Passmark comparison case study that compared several, several products that are in this space. And depending on the product that you choose, obviously some work faster than others. And as you keep some of these best practices in mind, it's pretty uh, it's pretty common that you can see some performance increases in those products regardless of which one you choose. Um, but of course, some are faster than others, but you know, try to optimize the deployment time with the product that you happen to have. Um, when you need to manage both your images and your drivers as a single work stream, that can really add a lot of d additional time to your deployment time. Um, there's a direct correlation between how many drivers, for instance, are inside an image and how fast that, that image is going to be deployed to whatever machine you're deploying to. Um, so keep in mind those kinds of things. Customers oftentimes only include you know, the OS and drivers in the image, but consider adding additional applications and not doing scripted installs at the endpoint because while it may take more time to create the package up front, your deployment times, nine times out of 10, are a lot faster since everything's already in that package. And it's a reliable way of doing everything in your environment. You know exactly what's gonna happen on every machine. Um, yeah. So if we switch gears a little bit, we will obviously wanna get to, get to talking about Smart Deploy and how Smart Deploy would adjust, address some of these, these challenges. Um, and candidly, not surprisingly, we're able to perform many of these best practice functions with Smart Deploy right now, right out of the box. Uh, it, it's a simple, reliable product and one of the most flexible deployment products that you can use in any environment on the market today. As it re pertains to reference computers, we have you use a virtual machine as opposed to a physical one. It's a really clean and controlled environment to start from. Uh, many virtualization software types are free. Um, they're portable file formats, they're sustainable. You don't need to buy or dedicate anything additional to it. Um, it's just a really easy to use thing. Um, server virtualization seems largely understood, but it's a relatively new concept to think about uh, reference machines being a VM and, and getting involved on the desktop um, in that way. In terms of image strategy, uh, as it pertains to Smart Deploy, our images are defined by the software and not at all by the hardware that you happen to support. Meaning we use a virtual machine to create the reference point and that virtual machine does not contain any drivers associated with any physical devices. So when we capture that virtual machine, the image itself only contains the software specific information that you like to be deployed throughout your environment. So your image is gonna contain windows and office and patches and whatever apps you decided you like. And modularly, you can manage and maintain your image logically and physically separate from
from the hardware you happen to support. What this means for customers is they can reduce the number of images that they have in their device library. Many customers get down to a single image based off of, you know, that software works for everybody. But at a minimum, you're cutting out images based off of any machine you happen to support. So it's a really flexible way of doing it, um, and it's really simple and easy to use. Our, uh, <clears throat> how we manage, how we create our images is different than other products as well. We have an offline wizard where you can just browse to that virtual machine and convert it right into an image. We use an image in, 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 excuse me, industry standard imaging file format that's file-based, not hard disk, sector-based, that allows for increased flexibility, not only with itself and our tools, but it allows you to plug in and use it with other products as well. With respect to driver management, this is honestly one of the best features about the product that customers seem to love the most. Um, we truly support hardware independence right out of the box, and only the drivers that are needed for any device are deployed only that to, uh, to that device. We pre-create a lot of these device driver packages for the major business class uh, computers, and they're available uh, as part of the services with the product. Um, but the image, since the images don't contain any drivers, uh, the drivers are injected at boot time, and only the drivers needed for those target systems are used. So it saves a ton of time. Um, you guys don't have to spend your time downloading, troubleshooting, and building out device driver packages since they're pre-built for you. And since only the drivers that need to be applied to that system are being applied, it's the fastest solution out there. In terms of image updates, it's really easy with Smart Deploy. We take care of SysPrep for you, um, so you don't have to start over rebuilding your reference computer ongoing. It's really easy. Turn on a virtual machine, make the updates and changes that you want, and just shut it down. Um, you're more likely to follow your update schedule that you want to stick to since it's so much easier and we support the offline capture and it really optimizes the bandwidth in your time since you're only storing the update information and not necessarily the entire image. So with respect to deployment time, this is a, a graph that's just a quick snapshot of one of the, the tasks that, that happened in the, uh, in the Passmark case study. In general, the five tips that we provided here and the five areas that we looked at with respect to deployment, those made us faster than anything else. So though we'd love to, you to try and use our product and all the stuff is baked right in and, and simple, you can definitely get some performance advantages using what you have as well. Um, but like I say, all these tips are built right into the product. These graphs are only showing deployment time for one computer, and as you build this out and do this to multiple computers, the time disparity gets even greater and greater. With respect to our approach, it's pretty simple. We, you don't have to dedicate any additional infrastructure or hardware to Smart Deploy. You simply create an IT workstation that's used to create and maintain your deployment, pro, your deployment packages. Then from there, you can use offline deployment media and directly start applying to any target device in your environment. You can leverage your additional infrastructure, whether it's a file server or any part of your network, whether it's a management server. Um, you can leverage those things to increase the functionality of Smart Deploy as well. We've got a lot of great customers from uh, SMB, you know, 10 or 20 seat houses all the way through the, through the enterprise and 50 or 100 uh, a thousand seed organizations that are able to use Smart Deploy and gain tremendous value and generally 100% return investment in, within their first, uh, first project. It saves customers a lot of time. It reduces the technical requirement and skill set that need to be in place for the, for the people doing this work. Um, it's just a more flexible product that customers are able to take and use Smart Deploy in the most demanding infrastructures on the planet and see success with it. We encourage you to take the Smart Deploy Challenge. Don't just take our word for it. We'd love to uh, see what you think. Um, to do that, just sign up at smartdeploy.com slash challenge. Um, attend this demo. You know, you guys for, for showing up today and attending this demo, we'll send you out a, a pair of Skull Candy earbuds. Um, take the trial. We have a fully functioning, free 15-day trial, um, so you can take and play with it in your actual environment and see how well it works for you. So we'll wrap this up with some, some question and answers. I know Heidi's had some people write in on the, on the chat, um, so we'll turn the time over to that. Great, thank you, Spencer. Great presentation. We had a few questions uh, roll in, so I will ask those here. 
Uh, let's see here. So the VM image would have VMware tools installed. How do you deal with that? Yeah, so we approach those in this instance with the question of the VMware tools, but also virtual machines additions or any other software that's related to the virtualization product as a device driver. Um, because we want to keep that baseline image as hardware agnostic as possible, uh, we'd recommend that you just don't install those tools. Um, it kind of gets away from one of those best practices of keeping the image as clean as possible. So I recommend that you don't use those. If you absolutely need the functionality to say, you know, automatically uh, move the, capture the mouse and keyboard or some kind of functionality that the, those tools provide, install them. But before you capture your image, make sure to uninstall them. Great. Thanks, Eric. Um, Eric wants to know, is this software is this software or device-based deployment? So we're we're mostly in the wipe and load business. We're great at new employee onboarding, hardware refresh, break fix, uh, migrations. Our software can contain our image file can contain all the software specific information and all the hardware specific information that you need to have any particular target device run. So you can include um, just software inside your image. Uh, and then with our product, it contains the hardware information to make the, the target device boot as well. Um, but again, we're mostly in the, the initial phase of IT of getting the corporate payload on anything every time perfectly. Great. Thanks, Spencer. So we are running right up um, on 1030, which is what we said is our end time. If you have a few minutes to stick around, we'll continue to answer um, some more questions live right now. If not, and if you need to drop off and head to another meeting, like I said, we'll send out a link to the recorded session so you can catch the rest of, of things. Um, but yeah, I'll, I will send out that link tomorrow that'll have a link, or the email tomorrow that'll have a link to the free trial as well as that Smart Deploy Challenge if you'd like to take us up on that. So thanks so much for being here. We're gonna go ahead and continue on with some more questions. Uh, what is the cost of the software? Yeah, so the cost basis, it's based on a per machine basis, and that's a perpetual license for the software. Um, support is renewed on an annual basis. Um, you need the software for the total number of computers in your environment that you're using, on, using it on. You can refresh and recycle old machines, and as long as you don't go over the total machine count, you don't need to buy additional licenses. So it's not like other products were a little more flexible there. Um, and it really depends on, it's tiered, so it really depends on how many machines you have in your environment. At the high end, you're probably closer to 40 to $50 per machine, and as you get to and through the enterprise, the price gets down to um, you know, $5, $10 per machine kind of thing. So it really depends on your environment. It scales perfectly and flexibly to fit uh, your environment and, and budgetary needs. Great. Uh, Jason wants to know, I think he meant here, uh, what kind of VM host do you use? Yeah, so I'm going to answer this kind of in two different ways. Um, we use virtualization and using a virtual machine as a best practice. And that could apply to any imaging software. And in that scenario, you could use virtually any virtualization software. Sorry to use virtual so much there, but um, that would be applicable same, same as using a physical machine with a lot of those software services. Um, with Smart Deploy, likewise, we support any different virtualization software that's out there today, uh, and we can do that by warm capturing or capturing from a booted state. We also support um, a subset of you know any indefinite virtualization product in the major players in virtualization, so Microsoft, VMware, Parallels, uh, Sun VirtualBox. So we support all those different um, virtualization softwares in an offline capture state as well, which will reduce the overall capture time. Yeah, there's some advantages or disadvantages based on you know different different type as well. Some some aren't free. Some there's a cost associated, and maybe that cost is worth it to you if you like some of the additional features. Some don't support 64-bit guest operating systems as well. So keep that in mind if you plan on using 64-bit, then there's kind of a black and white thing. Either a, a virtualization software title will or won't support that. So keep those in mind as well. Thanks, guys. Uh, how are device drivers handled for platforms not currently supported, for example, a white box? 
So you can create your own. We have a tool called the Platform Manager, and if you're already familiar with the drivers you need, the tool is dead simple to be able to basically add those drivers to a package. Um, we generally don't create white box driver packages for customers because they're so custom. We can work with you on a consulting basis uh, if that's what you're interested in. Um, we can also provide you some guidance on creating your own um, so that you can be kind of self-sustaining there or, like I say, you can engage us in, in a sort of a consulting fashion to, to work on those things. But it's the standard offering. Uh, we don't uh, create or support white box device drivers. Thanks, Spencer. When the image is deployed from the virtual machine, how do the updates to the image deploy to the original target machine? Talk a little bit about that, Eric. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not sure that I fully understand the question, but I'll try to answer it as best possible. So the process really is defined as you start from a virtual machine, you capture that virtual machine, and you have your baseline Im image. Um, Basically, anything that was part of that virtual machine would be deployed to the target device. Um, as far as from an updatability standpoint, you would update and, you know, depending on the software that you're using, create either a net new image based on the updates, or in the smart deploy land, you would create a delta of the updates, and then that delta would merge to the original image and uh, be applied to the target device. Okay. Yeah, hopefully that answered the question. If not, we can definitely chat more with you about that um, after the presentation. Another question about uh, languages. Um, where did that question go? Does Smart Deploy support multiple languages in Windows deployment on, as, on an as-needed basis? Yeah, so as part of the deployment process, we give you the option to select from a number of different languages. That language set is based on language packs that are available in Windows. Um, so you could start from a native language in the case of Windows XP, um, or that process has been upgraded a lot for uh, multilingual operating systems in Windows 7, where you can start from a base operating system and have language interface packs. Um, regardless of what your starting point is, Smart Deploy gives you the option to change that language selection um, based on the language packs that are available. All right, thanks, Eric. So we are about five minutes over. I'm just going to ask us, or we're going to just answer a few more questions here. Um, but like I said, we'll follow up with an email tomorrow, and we're always available to talk more about this. We have a support team that's, you know, fully available. You can you can email us at sales at smartdeploy.com, and we'll get that any of your questions fielded um, over to the right person. And um, we we really do look forward to talking with you more about your unique environment and and how Smart Deploy can play a role in that and, and be really helpful for you and your organization. Just a few more questions here. Uh, are you present in EMEA? Yeah, we have a great partner network and we can sell the product globally. Okay, great. And what format is the image file save? We use the Microsoft Imaging File Format, or WIM, as the file extension. Um, it's a single instance storage file-based container. Uh, that, and that's how Microsoft has shipped everything uh, that they send OS-wise from Vista forward. It's what all of their tools are expecting to find. Several of our other manufacturers support that file format as well. So you can use our tools. It's, it's really great. You can service those files offline. It's not a proprietary thing. It's only tied to Smart Deploy, so it's a, a really flexible, uh, reliable, and robust option for, for you guys to use. Thanks, Spencer. And one last question here. For a migration situation, does Smart Deploy have a solution where the current user state can be saved from a target, then reintegrated into the deployment, for example, XP to 7? Yeah, so migration is supported um, as part of the Smart Deploy process, uh, and that can be handled in a few different ways. Um, so we would recommend that you use the user state migration tool and wrap that into the Smart Deploy offering. Um, standard tool set offered by Microsoft. Um, so there's some documentation up on the website on how to do that. Uh, there's also the ability using Smart Migrate, which is a tool set of Smart Deploy, to migrate that Windows XP instance to a, a virtual machine, and then that virtual machine can be used in Windows 7 for application compatibility or access back to the data or something as well if you were in one of those situations. Thank you, Eric.
Okay, we're going to go ahead and end the event for today. But like I said, feel free to send any other questions if you think of something later as you're kind of, you know, replaying some of this stuff in your head and you have additional questions. Please do not hesitate to reach out. We are definitely here to help you out. Check out the Smart Deploy Challenge and, and see, just play around with Smart Deploy and see if it can be something that will work well for you guys. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time today.